Hi, in this video, I'm going to show how to generate code, C, C++ code from MATLAB for a object detector, an ICF object detector. And I'm going to do it both for dynamic and static matrices. And I have another example in the description of this video for doing the same with deep learning. This is not a deep learning, but a, the workflow is quite similar. Okay, so let's start the example. This example article is in the links in the description of this video. You just hit open live script and that'll take you to to the MATLAB desktop. Let's start it from the beginning. Uh, I was running this before, so I'm gonna just get rid of everything here. Okay, so these are the only two files that the examples com comes with. So the first one is this. Uh, I'm gonna quickly show uh, basically, if you want to generate code from MATLAB, generate C++, C++ code, you have to have a function and you have inputs and outputs. In this case, the input is an image and the output is the bounding boxes and the scores uh, where the object is found. In this case, we're going to detect a uh, stop signs uh, in the script like this. Okay, so we're going to have a, a people detector, a, per, uh, a object detector, which is the ACF object detector. And we hold it in a persistent uh, variable. And this is that for the first time you execute, it's going to be empty. So we're going to create it. And the second time you execute, and the second and forward uh, time you execute, you don't have to create that again because this is expensive. So uh, except for the first call to this function, uh, this is the only the only method uh, that, that it is uh, uh, called. The only f function that is called, which takes the image and calls the a detector, a detect method in the detector, and returns the bounding boxes and the score. So let's uh, run it. Let's have a run for it. Okay. And first, we're going to get an image, which is the image. Uh, it's actually the image that you see in here. I don't, don't have to display it. So I'm going to run it uh, with this command. Uh, this command uses the max that I'm going to talk about that more later. So I'm going to put a breakpoint. Yeah, I already have it. So in the first time, we're going to create the object. Oh, but I cannot do it still. Uh, but there's a, there's another detail. And so I'm going to run it uh, later. Uh, basically, I have to create the ACF detector because I'm loading it here. Uh, the function is not responsible for creating the ACF detector. That, that's done offline. And this is similar workflow as in deep learning. Deep learning you create your neural network, you train it, and when you're going to use it, you just load it. You don't create it. So the same workflow is, happen ha is happening here. So let's stop. We cannot execute this yet. So first, we're going to create the, get the data. Uh, and this is kind of similar to, to deep learning. Uh, you load some training data. And let's take a look at how it looks. We have data for stop signs, but also for cars in the, the rear and front of car. And you can see bounding boxes. So bounding boxes, this is the image. And for each image, you might not have anything about cars and you just have stop sign. For some image, you have two, each bounding box is four elements. So this is two by four. You have two bounding boxes. So you have two stop signs in here and no cars, etc. Okay. And all of them have stop signs. Okay. So let's just pick the first two columns, image file and stop sign, because that's what we care of in this example. And now let's take a look, and we only have two columns. Okay. So then uh, you can see that the path to the image is relative. So let's just put the full path on it. And let's take a look now. We have the bounding boxes and the full path of the image. And now we're going to pass this structure to this train ACF object detector to get a uh, create our object ACF object detector that is trained. It takes a little while, but not as much as uh, deep learning. Deep learning takes more time to train, but it's more accurate than this. This, uh, this is like a quick chip uh, solution. And uh, in, deep, in various deep learning books, I, I've seen that they recommend, OK, when you're doing a system, uh, try to do the most simple solution and then move on to the more complicated, precise solution uh, just to get the project up and running. So this can be a, like a quick and easy solution to just get your project up and running, and then you can improve it by replacing it with deep learning if it is worth it. Sometimes it is not. 
So is, is this ICF update detector can be like a good starting point. Okay. Uh, there's one caveat, uh, Malacoder has some problems with this object, so it is converted to a structure and this is done to, uh, uh, through this method. This is uh, misleading because this is a method from the ACF object detector. The, uh, the ACF object detector has a, a method to convert itself into a structure. And now we're going to save this structure into the map file. Okay, now we have it. Uh, and that's the map file uh, that we see over here. You can see the same name. So we're going to load it. And now we can create the image. And let's, uh, let's call the function again. Okay, so it's not created yet. So we enter inside. We're going to load the structure. And we have the same structure that we just created moments ago. And from that structure, uh, we get the classifier. We get the, the training options, and that's all this ACF object detector needs to create uh, an ACF detector. So we have the ACF detector, and now we can uh, detect the, the stop signs. So this we pass to detect the detect method, the input image, and we get the bounding boxes. And so let's run it. OK. OK, so let's run it again. And now this is the second time, and you can see that it's created already, so it's faster this time because we just call detector, which is already created. Okay, and we get exactly the same result. Okay, uh, now uh, let's uh, generate code for this. Okay, so let's break this down. This command first. This command is important here. Okay, let's go to the current folder. And this code gen is MATLAB coder. This is MATLAB coder here. It takes as a, an input the file for which you want to generate code for. And you pass the arguments, which is the inputs. And we can we have a couple of options. We can uh, pass an image in here. So the, the image that we have in the workspace, this one, which has a size of 368 by 563 by 3. Uh, this information is can be inferred. The type information can be inferred from the image, and you know the inputs types of the function that you're going to create in C, C++. But in this case, we want to create a dynamic image. So we use the color type of to just pass the type of the input. In this case, we're saying, OK, you are on sign int base, and your spatial dimensions are going to be infinite. That is, they're going to be dynamic. And you have the third dimension to be size of 3 because you have a red, green, blue image, a colored image. A, if you if you want that you generate code doesn't know about the size of the image, uh, you can use this uh, to make it dynamic. But if you know that your system is going to be the same size of the image always, then you can pass uh, the exact sizes or pass the image, uh, exemplifying the size of the image. And that's going to be more efficient because uh, you the MATLAB coder is going to recognize. I don't need to do all these dynamic dimension checks. So it's, it's going to be more efficient if you know that your system is going to have a, a fixed size. OK, so let's generate code for this. And, and finally, uh, I'm, go I'm going to give this for getting the report. I'm going to specify that, that my language is going to be C++. If you take this away, the language is going to be C. And this is to preserve dimensions, to generate multidimensional code rather than a uh, flat, because if you don't specify this, your matrices are going to become vectors in general code. So uh, the code uh, looks better and can be could be more efficient by preserving dimensions. OK, so this is going to take a while, so I'm going to pause. Code generation has not completed yet, but uh, we can expand this folder to see the artifacts. And you can see the, the entry point is finished. So the entry point of this function is going to be the same in here so it's going to have the same name so it's going to be this c++ file and from here uh, you can see the same entry point and since we specify a dynamic array you can see that uh, the dimension preservation didn't kick in so we have a flat dynamic array uh, using color array with the input image and you have the bounding boxes and the scores as output as, as expected and well the code uh, you're going to see detect so you know that is detect because you know that this detect method here 
uh, it should be somewhere around here and that's the ACF detect method so you're gonna find it in here so let's take a look at the detect so this is the entry point and this is similar to to, the, uh, to deep learning in the sense that the train ACF object detector has a huge matrix uh, in the case of deep learning could be a tensor and notice how dimensions are preserved. You have a multidimensional array here, and you're gonna see multidimensional all over the place. Multidimensional arrays uh, all over the place because of dimension preservation. Okay, uh, so there's gonna be a bunch of checks uh, because of dynamic arrays and things like that. Uh, but usually the algorithms, the core might be at the bottom. In this case. Uh, it's hard to find. This might be the core algorithm, and you, you can see a, a, a bunch of nested for and while loops. So usually when you see a bunch of for and while loops, that's a expensive computation, and you also see the bounding box and the score objects that are returned being created in here. Okay, uh, so let's test, verify that the generic code is correct. So when you generate code, uh, you have the option uh, to generate a, a max file, and the good thing about the max file that we see as one of the artifacts in here is actually in the root folder, the max file created by Malab Coder, Malab Code Generation. This max file is your compiled C++ C or C++ code it compiled to be able to run in Malab, so you can test it in Malab. This is this, the, the advantage of this is that you can test that your generic code is correct in Malab. But the, for deployment, you might specify, specify in the configuration that you want to generate a DLL or executable file, etc. So let's try the max file. You can see that you can execute it uh, by the name. So it's the same name of the function that we have in here, but with underscore max. And we pass the image and we get the bounding box. So let, let's take a look. First, uh, before doing this, uh, again, let's try executing the original function. And this is the values that we get. And now let's execute the max. And we get exactly the same values. And now let's take this bounding box and the scores and put it in, on top of the image using the insert object annotation that is going to create another image and we're going to is we're going to see the image and you have the score and the bounding box okay so it worked correctly we verified both numerically and visually that our code generation is correct that's good it's good always good comparing the simulation versus the code generation to make sure that everything is correct. Okay, now let's try another thing. Uh, let's, first, let's create the image all over again because, nope, that's not it. Uh, hmm. Okay. Let me, let me, I'm gonna restart this over. I'll, I'll be back. Okay, I I, I'm gonna make another experiment. I, instead of generating dynamic dimensions i'm going to generate static dimensions by just by passing the image in here and i'm going to show why but first i'm going to get rid of, of the existing artifacts the code gen and the math file i'm going to start all over again but i'm not going to make you wait for this i'm just going to uh, put a breakpoint let it run up to this run all these commands i'm going to do it offline Okay, so you can see here that I run all the commands from the beginning again, just to make sure that things are correct. And now I'm going to get the image and I'm going to generate code using static matrices rather than dynamic ones. Uh, so I'm going to copy this code gen command and I'm going to slightly modify it. Instead of passing the dynamic type, as I mentioned before, I'm going to pass the image. So this is going to infer the, the image size like this, something like this. And also the base type like this. Okay, so I'm gonna just generate code for it, and we're gonna see how the input uh, of the of the function is gonna be a static MD dimension because we are preserving dimensions. I'm gonna pause until it finish. Again, it has not finished yet, but we can examine the code. We can expand the code generation folder and. We can just see it here, and in the in, in the input, we're gonna see an input image. You can see a three-dimensional image with the, with the same size. So this should be more efficient uh, because uh, if we know that the size is gonna be fixed, okay. 
So let's uh, make sure that this works first. Uh, let's gonna try it uh, without a uh, without a uh, the real uh, simulation, and let's try the max. We we remember we deleted the max. We deleted the max uh, that was created previously, and we have a new max. So this should be the static one, and it gives us exactly the same number. And we're just gonna show, making sure that it. Works correctly? Yes, it works as expected. Okay, so that's it for the video. Thank you very much for watching.